gone. And the drovers, and the drovers are, gone. are gone. The Comanches, the Comanches are, gone. are gone. And the outlaws are and gone. The outlaws are gone. Geronimo's gone. Geronimo's gone. And, and Sam Bass is Sam gone. Bass is gone. And the lion is gone. The lion is gone. And the red if there, I have no idea if there's a god. But if there's a god, God would be very, very pleased with me. If you could just watch me here, how much I love them, how much I adore them, how respectful I am to them, how I am one of them and how the studies they give me, the photographs, the video, and take that around for no charge to people around the world. It's good work. I feel good about it. I feel good about myself doing it. And I want to continue, and I hope I can. I really hope I can. But if not, be warned. I will die for these animals. I will die for these animals. I will die for these animals. Thank you so much for letting me do this. Thank you so much for, for, for these animals, for, for giving me a life. I had no life. Now I have a life. Do another take here. I fucked up the last one. I almost just fell off the cliff. I'm a fucking asshole. Behind me is the grizzly sanctuary, and also behind me, hidden down below in those trees somewhere, is my camp. I must stay incognito. I must hide from the authorities. I must hide from people who would harm me. I must now even hide from people that seek me out because I've made some sort of, um, I don't want to say celebrity, but um, they come here to Alaska and they hear about Treadwell in the bush and they want to go find him. Well, they can't. I'm hidden down below. No one knows where I am. Even I don't even know where I am. That was pretty shitty. Let's do a really short take here. There's going to be a number of takes I'm going to do. These are called wild Timmy jungle scenes. We're going to do several takes of each where I'll do it with a bandana on, maybe a bandana off, maybe two different colored bandanas, some without a bandana, some with the camera being held. I kind of stumbled on that one. Let's do it again. So the basic deal is, too, that this stuff could be cut into a show later on but who knows what look I had, whether I had the black bandana or no bandana. Uh, very rarely the camo one, but I like the camo look. Both cameras rolling, both cameras rolling, both cameras rolling. Sexy green bandana. Uh, last take of the evening, I'm on my way to the front creek. I need to get watering. And it's a super duper low tide, full moon tonight. I cannot understand why girls don't want to be with me for a long time because I have really a nice personality. I'm fun. I'm very, very good in the, uh, well, I, you're not supposed to say that when you're a guy, but I know I am. They know I am. And um, I don't fight with them. I'm, I'm so passive. A bit of a patsy. Which is that a turn off to girls to be a patsy? I mean, it's not. It's not that I'm a total great guy. I'm a lot of fun and have a good life going. I don't know what's going on. I always wished I was gay. It would have been a lot easier. You know, you can just bing, bing, bing. Gay guys have no problem. I mean, they go to restrooms and truck stops and they perform sex. It's like so easy for them and, and stuff. But you know what? Alas, Timothy Turnbull is not gay. Bummer. I love girls. And girls, girls need a lot more, need a lot more, you know, finesse and, and care and, and I like that a bit, but when it goes bed down bad and you're alone, it's like, well, you know, you can't rebound like you can if you were gay. I'm sure gay people have problems too, but not as much as one goofy straight guy named Timothy Treadwell. Anyway, that's my story. That's my story. <laughs> Hi, Tim. <laughs> what are you doing up there? That's where you're sitting?
What are you doing to that hat? Where's that hat going? Hey, who's stealing that hat? Let me see that hat. Ghost, I want that hat. Man, ghost is bad. Ghost, what are you doing with that hat? Ghost, that hat is a very important hat. Drop it. Thanks. Oh, god damn it. I can't believe this. Ghost! Ghost, where's that fucking hat? That hat is so friggin' valuable for this trip. Ghost, you come back here with that friggin' hat. If it's in the den, I'm gonna fucking explode. Ghost, where's that hat? But it's not okay for you to steal it. Oh, man. Oh, man. It's a friggin' den. Only Timmy is the boss of all foxes and all bears. You're the ruler. Look at that ear. Yay. Thanks for being my friend. This is so good. Does it feel good? Yeah. We patrol the grizzly sanctuary together. How did we meet? Over a decade ago. He left his mother and father's side, promptly peed on my shoes, pooped on my clothes. That was it. He was my friend, Timmy the Fox. Yep. And we watch over things. And he's the boss. Takes care of everything. Yep. Yep. Yes, I love my head pet. I think one of the things that's really important is you can see the bond that be has developed between this very wild animal and this very, fairly wild person. And you realize he has this gorgeous fur and people are trying to kill him for it with steel jaw traps and cruel farming practices and other people run him down on horses for sport, fox hunting. We want this to end between Timmy the fox, this beautiful fox and me. We ask the public, please stop killing and hurting these foxes and torturing them. Don't you think? Yeah. If they knew how beautiful he was and how sweet he was, they would never hurt him. Thanks, Kate. I love you. Look at you. You're the best little fox. But how did I how did I come into this work, Iris? Did you ever did you ever get the story? I was I was troubled. I was troubled. I drank a lot. Did you know that? Iris, you wouldn't even know what that is, but um, I, I, I used to drink to the point of um, that I guess I was either going to die from it or, or break free of it, but nothing, nothing Iris could get me from, from to stop drinking. Nothing. I went to programs. I tried quitting myself. I did everything that I could to try not to drink, and then I did everything I could to drink, and, um, and it was killing me until I discovered this land of bears and realized that they were in such, such great danger that they, they needed a caretaker, they needed someone to look after them, but not a drunk person, not a person messed up. So I promised the bears that if I would look over them, would they please help me um, be a better person? And um, they become so inspirational and, um, and living with the foxes too, that I did. I gave up the drinking. I, it was a miracle. It's an absolute miracle. And the miracle was animals. The miracle was animals. Well, here I am at the scene of the fight. It looks as if tractors tore the land up, raked it, rode it, tilled it, tossed it about. There's fur everywhere, and in the camera foreground, excreted waste in the middle of the fight, so violent. So upsetting that Sergeant Brown um, went to the bathroom, did a number two during his fight. Um, extremely emotional, extremely powerful. And yet both bears back in pursuit of Saturn, including Mickey, who appears to have gotten the worse for the wear in the fight between Sergeant Brown and Mickey for the right to court Saturn, the queen of the grizzly sanctuary. Amazing. Oh, Mickey, I love you. And Mickey's now the closest bear to Saturn. Back in like a horse in a race that does not give up. We love that bear, Mickey. We love him. We love him. But Mickey, up and down that street. Up and down that street. Uh, you don't always get the chick you want. 
Let me tell you, it doesn't always have to work out. Hey, he's after my own heart. He, he, don't, he don't give up, even when it looks shitty. All right. Love you, Mickey. Love you, Mickey. Well, I just want to discuss that fight with, with Mickey Bear right here. He's right next to me here in the Grizzly Sanctuary on the Tide Flat Saturn off to camera left. Mick, you underestimated Sergeant Brown. You went in for the hit. He seemed to be rope-a-doping you like he wasn't that tough. And then once you, you banged into him, man, he turned out to be one heck of a rough bear, a very rough bear. And I'm telling you, I was so scared. I almost got sick to my stomach watching you fight. And then when he knocked you down and you had him, and you were down on your back, it was terrible. It was terrible. I, I, I'm not duking it out for any girl like that. I'm telling you right now, I'm not duking it out for any girl. But I, you know, I, well, I've had my troubles with the girls. Yeah, yeah. And I'll tell you something. If Saturn was a female human, I could just see how beautiful she is as a bear. Whew. I've always called her the Michelle Pfeiffer of bears out here. All right, you lay there. I'm gonna go off with your girlfriend. Don't beat me up over it. I'm, I'm cool, I'm cool, I'm respectful. Things are bad for me with the human women, but not so bad that I have to be hitting on bears yet. Okay? Okay, that's How's the hair look? <laughs> In the last two hours, we're up a little over 0 0.20 inches of rain. That is not enough. We're gonna need more rain. We need more rain! Downey is hungry! Tabitha is hungry! Melissa is eating her babies! I'm like a fucking nut. We've got to have some rain. Now, I'm not a religious guy, no. But I'm telling you, I just, I'm just pissed because it just doesn't seem right. It just doesn't seem right. I, I know it's just weather and crap like that, and it's, uh, I don't know what, what the variables are, but we've got to have some goddamn rain! So if there's a God, don't he needs to eat! Dump on us! Hurt us! Come on! Think rain. Think rain. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a crappy little shower right now. What kind of crappy little... Come on! Dab this again. Does not make me very, very happy. I want rain. I want, if there's a god, to kick some ass down here. Let's have some water, Jesus boy. Let's have some water, Christ man, or, or Allah, or, or Hindu floaty thing. Let's have some fucking water for these animals! It is now... September 21st, Thursday of the year 2000, Expedition 2000. I am the Lord's humble servant. I am Allah's disciple. I am the floaty things uh, go for boy. There has been a miracle here. There's been an absolute miracle. It has rained. 1.65 inches of rain today. We have over two inches now in the storm and it is not stopping. It may hit three inches of rain. It went from a trickle to a flood, and it's amazing. And we have a really, really great chance of, of, of a run of fish for the animals. And what is even more miraculous, according to my radio, it is not raining much around anywhere else but around here. Oops. Well, it's now after uh, 2 o'clock on October 4th, and the tent is caved in due to the storm. I'm still here with my little teddy bear, Tara for the bear. And um, I think the storm has actually gotten a little weaker, but in the course of it getting stronger, it crushed the well in and bent some of the poles. And you really can't do much about it because um, once they get like that, they just stay kind of bent in and you're screwed and, and all that. This is my life. This is what I do. And I, I love it. I love it. Even this. I love it. <laughs> My tent crushed in. I love it. It's pathetic, but I love it. It's hard to say, but it's a warning of a sort, and it's obviously here to upset me. Whew. Hi, Timothy. See you in summer of 2001. Now, it doesn't say, hi, Timothy, we're going to fucking kill you. It doesn't say, hi, Timothy, 
Uh, you're fucking dead. We're going to chop your legs off. Hey, Timothy, get the fuck out. It just says, see you in two, summer 2001. But it is some sort of a warning. It is some sort of a ha-ha. Um, I don't think it's friendly. Well, it's gotten a little worse here with uh, there's just the warning. Hi, Timothy. See you summer 2001. Now I find this big stack of rocks that were, you know, put some labor here. We're not calling this uh, the building of the pyramids, but we are saying there's, there's a bit of trouble. Now, I'm going to walk back. I'm going to bring you back here to my camp. Let's come through here. Pathway. Here's where... Here's where the, the sign was here, which is where my tent is. And then we go over where my bear-proof barrels would be, and we find boulders piled up. Boulders piled up and a happy face indelibly painted into the rock, like looking at me. Very, very frickin' frightening, huh? <laughs> Whoever put it there, knew what they were doing. That it was, it's a warning. And it's, and the thing is, it's a better than a warning than, um, it's better than like, you're fucking dead type of thing. It's creepy, baby, it's creepy. It's Freddy Krueger creepy. Well, we're into autumn now. Expedition 2001 coming to an end. The bears moving safely towards their winter dens. The foxes hiding in the woods. Safe from the humans that would come to harm them. It's been an amazing season. It's been difficult. But I came, I served, I protected, and I studied. And I promise, I'll be back. My hair. Expedition 2001 coming to an end for grizzly people, for me, Timothy Treadwell. I came here and protected the animals as best I could. In fact, I'm the only protection for these animals out here. The government flying over a grand total of two times in two months. How dare they? How dare they challenge me? How dare they smear me in their campaigns? How dare they? When they do not look after these animals and I come here in peace and in love, neutral, in respect. I will continue to do this. I will fight them. I will be an American dissident if I need be. There's a patriotic time going on right now, but as far as this fucking government's concerned, fuck you motherfucking park service. Uh, Timothy, I'm getting a bad feeling about you. Oh, I saw you on David Letterman. You're <laughs> fairly entertaining. All right, that's my uh, heavy stuff. Let's do a couple of nice takes now. Oh man, did I get angry? Fuck them, right? They do not watch these animals. They don't care about these animals. All they want to do is, is screw people like me around. It's amazing. Let, let the fishermen fucking shoot the animals. Let the fucking poachers come in here and fuck them. Let the fucking commercial people fuck them around with their fucking uh, cameras and shit and the tourists. But we're gonna co-screw with Timothy Treadwell because he loves animals and teaches ki kids for free. Let's go, let's do that. That's what we're gonna do. Well, fuck them, fuck them. I beat you, I beat you motherfuckers. I beat you, beat you. Fuck you, I beat you, I beat you. I'm the champion, I'm the fucking champion. I beat you, I beat your fucking asses. Fucking losers, fucking nobodies. Fuck. Fuck.
fucking fucks. Well, Expedition 2001 coming to an end. The bears safely moving into their winter dens. The foxes hiding in the woods. I came here, I studied them, protected them. And I promise you, I promise, the grizzly people, I will be back. I will be back. And I thank the animals for keeping me safe and for inspiring me. I thank them so very much. Goodbye. This is my favorite. This is my cowboy. Always in black, always sunglasses, and always a bandana. Hello, 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 woo! No, no. Careful, man. The storm's going to go on and on and on. It does look like I make it out of here for another week or so. Uh, oh, look at that. I put my tripod up to shore up the tent and put a, put a pole up there. And it's, now I got a tent. That's a pretty good idea, huh? Aha, uh -huh, pretty good for me. of her. My girl. I'm touching her. It's her poop. It's Wendy's poop. I know it may seem weird that I touched her poop, but it was inside of her. It, it, it's what... It, it's her life. It's her. And she's so precious to me. She gave me Downey. Downey's... I adore Downey. Everything about them is perfect. I love you, and I love you, and I don't understand. It's a painful world. He wandered too far from the den. And the wolves last night that I heard howling, screeching in glee and excitement. It was over the termination of one of the babies. It's Expedition 2001, it's taken a sad turn, but it is a real turn. And I mourn the death of this gorgeous baby fox. Goodbye, little fox. Get out of his eye, they're freaking flying. Don't do it when I'm around. Some respect, fucker. Well, I'm here with one of my favorite bears. It's Mr. Chocolate. Hey, Mr. Chocolate. He is the star of many people across the country, children, people, adults, and um, we're here in the Grizzly Sanctuary, but I'm wrapping up my work here in the Grizzly Sanctuary. Why is that? Because I'm on my way to the Grizzly Maze, where bears do not have human protection, but are under human threat. Bears like Aunt Melissa, bears like Demon Hatchet, Downey and Tabitha, and it's time for me to go to protect them. I wish I could bring Mr. Chocolate with me. He, he, you'd be great protection there. He's been with me for over a decade and he's been my good friend and I really appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Chocolate. I'll see you again next year. Nope, I'll see him again at expedition. This ended this expedition. I'll be back here to join you again, back with Mr. Chocolate. But first, it's off to the exciting and often dangerous grizzly maze. I think he was over 10 feet high, don't you? Oh, he's a big bear. He's a big bear. A very big bear. Wow. Huh. Anyway, he's over here rub-a-dub-dubbing. It's a big bear. Oh. If I retreat, I may be hurt, I may be killed. 
I must hold my own if I'm going to stay within this land. For once there is weakness, they will exploit it. They will take me out. They will decapitate me. They will chop me into bits and pieces. I'm dead. But so far, I persevere. I persevere. Most times I'm a kind warrior out here. Most times I'm, I am gentle. I am like a flower. I am like, I'm like a fly on the wall, observing, non-committal, non-invasive in any way. Occasionally I am challenged, and in that case, the kind warrior must, must, must become a samurai, must become so, so formidable, so fearless of death, so strong that you will win. You will win. Even the bears will believe that you are more powerful. And in a sense, you must be more powerful if you are to survive in this land with the bear. No one knew that. No one ever friggin' knew that there are times when my life is on the precipice of death and that these bears can bite, they can kill. And if I am weak, I go down. I love them with all my heart. I will protect them. I will die for them. But I will not die at their claws and paws. I will fight. I will be strong. I'll be one of them. I will be the master. Still a kind warrior. <laughs> Love you, Rowdy. Give it to me, baby. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. I can smell death all over my fingers. And that's my story here for me, Timothy Treadwell, the kind warrior. Can I take it? I'm trying. Okay, yeah, I can do it. Yeah, why not? Why not? Across the halfway point. Government's given me all they have so far. I've stood up to it. I've had danger in the boat, almost died. I've almost fallen off a cliff. Yeah. The danger factor is about to amp up in the maze. The maze is always the most dangerous. Lord, I do not want to be hurt by a bear. I do not. This has been to Alaska many times, and I'm sure he loved it to the end, you know? It was, it's just his childhood toy. A, a normal, everyday kid. Never any trouble in school, always a good student. Not an A student, a B student. And uh, got along great with kids and animals. Him and I were extremely connected to animals in the house, I think more so than anybody else. He went off to Bradley University on a diving scholarship. I think he started drinking out there and having, you know, just hanging out with the wrong people. And then he injured his back and he ended up losing his scholarship and coming back home. Yeah, he did attempt to smoke marijuana in the house. Yeah. But uh, he did. I put the kibosh on that, but obviously he was doing it elsewhere. So. He really wanted. Uh, a new start, a fresh start. So when he, when he went out to California, he was 19 or 20. He wasn't a young 15 or 16 year old, he was of age. He got a job just to make money on the Queen Mary at the uh, gift shop. Uh, he did hire an agent. He did change his name to Treadwell to be uh, theatrical. 
and it was a family name. Uh, I, I know he got on uh, Love Connection with Chuck Woolery. I think he got on another show. There were promises made that never came true, and he tested with the actors to get the bartender job on Cheers. And allegedly, he came in second to Woody Harrelson. How close a second, I don't know. But that is what really destroyed him, that he did not get that job on Cheers. He spiraled down. Mm -hmm. Okay, Timothy. I love you. And rest peacefully. Rest peacefully, my love. Finally figured a way out to live here forever. He's here forever. And the drovers, and the drovers are, gone. are gone. The Comanches, the Comanches are, gone. are gone. And the outlaws are, and gone. The outlaws are gone. Geronimo's gone. Geronimo's gone. And Sam Bass is Sam gone. Bass is gone. And the lion is gone. The lion is gone. And the red wolf is and gone. And Treadwell is gone. Well, he cursed all the roads and the old men. And he cursed the automobile. Said this is no place for an hombre like I am In this new world of asphalt and steel Then he'd look off some place in the distance At something only he could see He'd say all that's left now of the old days Damned old coyote there you go. Ooh, yip, ooh, yip, ooh. Ooh, 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 the outlaws are gone, now Quantro's gone, Stan Wante's gone, and the lion is gone, and the red wolf is gone.